My friends and I thought that we were witches in training, but we were 11. And this was before Google. This was back when you had to ask Jeeves. So our resources were really limited. So our training looked like a lot of light as a feather, stiff as a board, watching movies like Hocus Pocus and The Craft, and sneaking onto our neighbor's lawn on Halloween to summon spirits because it was rumored there was an ancient burial ground there. We took ourselves very seriously, but there was nothing more serious or more real to us than the Ouija board. It was a dark and stormy night when I ventured up the road to Megan's house. Once inside, we quickly closed the door, dimmed the lights, kneeled on the carpet, and peeled the plastic off the newly minted board. How this mass-manufactured product available for $17.99 from Walmart carried so much power, we did not know, but we were believers, so we got to work. First, we summoned Abraham Lincoln, because why not? And he said some stuff that I don't really remember, but he was never that quotable anyway. And besides, we were just getting started. He was just our warm up, because you see the real deal, the main event was the lead singer of Nirvana, Kurt Cobain, yes. So Kurt Cobain had already died of overdose by the time Megan and I even discovered Nirvana, but we still considered ourselves tied for number one fan. And for the record, it's totally possible to have a crush on a dead guy. Every word he muttered, at least the ones I understood, spoke to my soul. When he sang, light my candle in the dice, cause I found God, yeah, yeah. I felt simultaneously angered and aroused. I truly believed that we were meant to be together. And Megan thought they were meant to be together too. So, what would Kurt say when we summoned him from beyond the grave? Would he finally tell us which one of us he really loved? We placed our fingers on the pointer, took a deep breath, and called forward Kurt Cobain's spirit. Instantly, the pointer started moving across the alphabet. My eyes flew up to Megan's. She wasn't forcing the pointer. I don't know if she was, and besides, she had just as much at stake here as me. So I regained my composure and waited for Kurt's message. H. O. T. Hot. Yes, yes, you are hot, Kurt Cobain. Or do you mean me? D. O. G. S, dogs, hot dogs, yeah, yeah, I like hot dogs, they're, they're good, I guess. T, A, S, T, E, oh, I could practically taste the words falling from his supple lips. L, I, K, E, this isn't like Kurt Cobain, this is love. C, H, I, C, K, E, N, chicken, hot dogs taste like chicken. Goodbye. Hot dogs taste like chicken. That's it. That's your message? That's what you journeyed across worlds to tell me? I don't even know what that means. Do they have heroin in the afterlife? Or is it some sort of secret code? Am I the hot dog? Are you the chicken? I never found out. Eventually, we put away the Ouija board and it started collecting dust on the shelf. Over time, our dreams of becoming witches and even our obsession with Kurt Cobain started collecting dust too. But I will never forget that fateful moment when our souls intersected, which now, looking back, I imagine sounding something like, Hot dogs taste like chicken, yeah!